Good morning, fellow cookiers. This is Kelly, and I'm back again with a tutorial. Um, this time it's for breaking stencils apart. So you have numerous stencils, and then you put them back together, and you can um, airbrush them. If you want to use royal icing, my recommendation would be that you airbrush all of the colors that you see here, and then maybe um, one of two things have one of the colors uh, royal icing and you would do that one last or when you're all finished with the airbrushing with all of these colors you would then have another stencil that you would put on top of your cookie and um, use royal icing whether it's an image or words or whatever you'd want but anyway one of my favorite things to do is to find uh, designs on silhouette uh, and take them apart deconstruct them and that way when I use my airbrush I can make more than one color. So that's kind of what I'm going to go over today really really quickly. This is a design by Tanya Batrak, B-A-T-R-A-K and I found it on Silhouette just really really quickly. This is a personal use design only and I am not advocating at all that you take this stencil, this design, excuse me, and recreate it on a cookie that you're going to sell. So I'm not telling you to do that. I personally wouldn't do that. So uh, completely up to you. If you like it, I would contact her. She has a great blog, by the way. Um, she talks about making stencils. If you go to this design in the Silhouette store, there's a link where she talks about how to make a stencil. Um, it might be of help. I didn't, I just looked at the site really quick. And if you take a really close look, you'll notice that it's in a uh, foreign language, but under each of the paragraphs in her language is the paragraph in English. So anyway, let's get, let's get to it here. So the, I, this is a long project. So what I did first was basically all of the steps that I would have done and then I'm just going to go over them really quickly with you. So to pull this in I will open up my store really quick or actually let me just show you this. This is the design. This is the artist right here and you can see um, that this is a personal use only design. Do with that what you will but I am personally saying that I am not advocating for you to then sell a cookie with this stencil. Okay, so that's what it looks like before I've done anything to it. And this is what it looks like before I played. So what I did was I right clicked and I released the compound path. And now everything is separated including this right here, which is this outline. Okay, so then uh, I changed the shape, or excuse me, I changed the size of this design to be five and a half by five and a half so that it will fit in my um, Stencil Genie from Creative Cookier, who's fabulous, by the way. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this. So I'm just going to have to click and drag over everything because I ungrouped or released the compound path. So basically what I did was I just picked the design. I released the compound path. Oh, now i got to ungroup because I grouped this. So there we go. So now everything is separate. And in, learn, in kind of figuring out the best way to do this, I came to the realization that um, simply picking all of these shapes out so that I could cut them separately, like this image over here I'll show you in a minute, it got really hard when there was no color, when they, when they didn't have any color to them and they looked just like the um, design I had shown you before. Let me go back real quick and pull that back up. So if you're gonna go through here and pick what you want to be green, for example, and make that a stencil to cut green, it got very, it's very difficult once you have all these bounding boxes. 
um, they kind of overlap each other and it's really, really hard. Well, it's hard for me anyways. So what I decided I was going to do is I just started coloring them. And you can see them a lot better, And when you, but more importantly, when you separate them, you can see them a lot better. So the first thing I did was I just went through and I um, ungroup. I got to ungroup. Imagine, if you will, that it looks just like this one. And I just would start selecting what I thought I wanted. So in the beginning, I would select just, you know, say a couple shapes along the way, kind of bringing them together or, you know, kind of getting a feel for where I wanted them to be. And then I would come over here to the color window and just pick a color. And that's kind of how it got started. So I needed to make myself a key. So I, you, I had this particular design gets kind of hairy once you start filling in colors because of its, the geometric design of it. So uh, in the design world, uh, interior design specifically, you want to do things in threes, in odd numbers. So threes, fives, sevens. So the, the more intricate this design, I didn't think that three would be as interesting as five. And I didn't want to do four because it, it makes me kind of crazy. So anyway, so that's what I did. I would just go through holding down my shift key. I'm on a Mac holding down my shift key and clicking. And again, consider, you know, visualize if you can that these are actually don't have any color in them. And then just go over and pick your color and keep going and going and going until you have them all filled. So the way that I did this, I'm sure everybody knows, I just went to the rectangle tool, held my shift key down, made a square, went to the select tool, held down my alt key and clicked and drag. And that's how you can duplicate. You can also right click and duplicate. So, and then I just filled them same way, picked each one. I picked each one and put in my colors that I'm using so I had a, a visual. Because once I got to three colors, I was having a hard time making sure that I had three colors. So that's how I did that. And real quick, if you want to know this, the way that I straightened them up is to just go over to this window right here in a center, align center, and then I aligned vertically. So they're spaced the same apart this way, and then they're all lined up. So just real quick there. So then what I did was I picked the five and a half by five and a half box, and then I held down my shift key and started selecting all of this sort of aqua color, for example. And I'm not going to pick them all. What I do in my process is I hold... I click down with my mouse and I drag and I just kind of look I don't let go of, I, I can let go and I just drag it away because then I'm able to see oh I still need to get um, I'm gonna command Z and go back and that will help you because see how all of these bounding boxes are kind of overlapping each other and again holding down the shift key the more you do that the more crazy the bounding boxes become on the design and it makes it visually hard to see if you've picked the aqua color or not or if you actually accidentally unclicked an aqua because now you've got bounding boxes everywhere so just keep going through and when you think you've got everything picked let go of the shift key click down with your mouse and just drag that away let go of it and just see if you have everything. And we don't, we miss this little guy right here. So Command Z, get it back, hold your Shift key down, very important. If you were to click on this right here without holding down your Shift key, you're gonna get rid of all the other bounding boxes and you have to start over. So Shift and Select, let go of Shift, click down on your mouse and drag away. And again, just review all of this and make sure that you don't have anything, that you haven't missed any of that aqua color.
and I think I have it. So I'm going to Command Z again because I want to go back. But this time I'm going to click down on my Alt key first. Again, I'm on a Mac. Alt key, click and drag. And now what I've done somehow, yes, now what I've done is pulled away all of the aqua. There's still aqua there because you don't want to lose that. Click all of the alt and then I'm going to group that. So now there, there we are. We're grouped. Let me zoom out. Don't ask me why I've got two of these, but I do. And this one is not one that I want. I'm going to get rid of that one. Okay. Oh, I got it. Okay. So there's uh, a, a good visual of everything that I did and pulling everything apart so you can see. Um, so now you're just going to keep doing that for each one until you've got five of these hanging around. Once you do that, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this, and I'm going to move, oops, uh, Command C is go back. You can also go back right here. So you need to pick everything and group them. You can right click and group if you'd like. I'm going to get this out of the way, and I'm going to get this little guy out of the way because I don't really need him. don't really need him anymore, period, but okay. So I'm going to get rid of the one that I just did to help you guys. And I use um, a stencil material that's 9 by 12, which means I can get two stencils on a sheet at the same time for cutting. So if you want, you can leave these colors here. You, you can go back up and take them away. And if you don't know how to do that, just really quick. Um, I mean, ungroup. you would just pick all of your colors. And basically, let me go back. The easiest way to do that would have been this way. So now they're all ungrouped. So the easiest thing to do would have been hold down your shift key and get rid of your, something's not correct. It looks like I've got two. Anyway, we're just gonna leave it like that. Easy, easy. So you would just go over here to the fill and click on this and it'll take all your colors away and now you're just left with the with the box for cutting the cut lines excuse me so I'm gonna command Z command Z until I get myself back to the beginning where I was look like I had two of these so that's it so then I put it through my cutter and I'll do one of two things uh, sometimes I make the little half moon looking nubby here that sticks out from the from the genie and I'll number it um, just to make sure that I, because once you cut it on your acetate, you have no idea what color it's supposed to be. So you can do one of two things. I would look for a place on the stencil that's not going to be anywhere near a cookie, which would be here or maybe here. And I would number it with a Sharpie on the front, not the back, because then for sure it's not going to touch the cookie and most likely not touch your royal icing if you were to use it. So anyway, that's what I would do. Um, cut them all, and then you are able to put them all back together one at a time and stencil your cookie with uh, airbrush. My recommendation would be based, this one is not that big of a deal because nothing is touching but I would go uh, start lighter and work my way to darker. That would be how I would do it in whatever color scheme you're going to use and do it that way. But that's how I break stencils apart so that I can then use them um, in a, this one's like what a five part stencil, which is so much fun. And they can, it can be used for a background. It could actually be your cookie, a part of a set, whatever. But anyway, have fun. I hope it helped. If you have any questions, feel free to um, drop me a message. I have a Facebook page for my cookie, little tiny cookie business. It's KLM Cookie Company. If you have any questions, message me. I hope this helped. Have a great day. Bye.